Hi, I'm Mark Hauser. Welcome to my DVD world. I'm going to tell you the story on how I started photography all the way from the beginning. When I was growing up, my father was the amateur photographer, and he gave me an old, beat-up Brownie Hawkeye. I went to camp with it, took pictures of everybody in the camp. They had a contest in camp who could take the best picture. I took a picture of my camp counselor. His name was Buck. He was uh, kind of like scraping off the boot of his uh, cowboy boot. And uh, we uh, hung them all up at the end of the year, the camp year, and I won first prize. I never won first prize for anything. So I said, this might be something I'm good at. So I came back and started taking lots of pictures, sometimes five or six rolls a day, processing, making prints, processing, making prints. Then I uh, noticed that people would come up to me after I did a picture or two and said, hey, I'd like to buy one of those. Or, hey, I'd like you to do a picture of me like that. And that's when I decided that maybe photography was my career. What makes one of my images unique is the way I light it, the shape in it, the design, the way I frame it. My framing is very important. Always remember that in all my photographs, I never crop. All the edges and everything is you see exactly the way I saw it through the camera. The most important part of my photographs is I give everything I got to get everything I need. I take my heart and pull it out of my chest and hand it to the subject and say, I trust you, trust me now. It all started when I bought a little house on Willow Street. And I had this little teeny room. And in the room was a window. And I brought all my friends over there and I took a little bed sheet and sprayed it with spray paint and put it on the wall. And I figured this was my studio. I couldn't afford anything more. And I started doing pictures of people. And I started noticing the light from the window I really like that light. And just trying to get people to work within the light and getting everything to happen all at once. Light, design, emotion, feeling, the frame. When you get all those rolled up into one, you get a great photograph. Photography is something that I do to make a living. And my art is what I do for myself. But what I try to do is get people to use me for my art and create great ideas and great things for a way to make a living. If you want to be a photographer and you want to make a living at it and you want to be really good, you got to put all your love into it. So if you want to do it, you got to just spend all your time taking pictures. People ask me all the time, how do you take great pictures, Mark Hauser? You can become a great photographer and take great pictures by taking lots of pictures. And when you think you've taken a lot of pictures, take more. A print should be pristine. A print should be every edge of that photograph should have a reason why it should be in there. Why do you have that window in the corner? Why do you have that object in the foreground? Why are the hands, person's hands crossed that way? Why is their head to the left, not to the right? Why is everything in that image should be there for a reason? If it's not in there for a reason, you should take it out. You should frame it differently. Come in. I find out most of the time when I'm framing up, I find that the best thing to do is once you get a frame, take a step into the subject. The closer you get, the better. The more you get into your frame with the least amount of stuff and keep it simple. Ideas. Don't be afraid of them. There are no ideas stupid. There's no such thing as stupid, because when you're stupid is when you learn. Like when you were a kid, and you were walking down the street, and you dropped something out of your pocket. You picked it up, it was broken. You learned that you can't drop things on the floor because they'll break. Well, when you're taking pictures, and you do a photograph that doesn't work, it doesn't mean that you wasted the film. You now learn that that doesn't work. And you go into another thing, and do another photograph and try that. And if that doesn't work, you try it again. And you try it over and over again until you get something that works for you. I have people that are around me that 
I bounce things off of. Say, hey, what do you think of this photograph? Hey, I try to show my pictures to as many people as possible and get their feedback. And then I go back and do more photographs until I get exactly what I'm looking for with a group of people around me that I'm, you know, taste and judgment. You got to use your taste and judgment. You got to use your mind. You got to use your ideas. Don't be afraid of your ideas. Don't be afraid. We're going to talk now about the table shot. My favorite shot. You just need a soft box, a fill board, a background, and a table and a chair. It's simple. Last year I did 9,800 of these photos. They were very successful simply because when subjects walk in, they feel secure sitting at the table. They feel like they're at home. They sit down at the chair, they put their arms on the table, they look down at their hands, they look up at the camera. You just keep moving them back and forth around the table. It's a really comfortable situation. And that's what you want your subjects to be, comfortable. Here's an example of the photograph we're gonna create for you today. It's a photograph of my friend Jovanka. She's a model, mother, but she's gonna be wearing a beautiful classic outfit. Just black, black, just really simple. So all you need is a few components to do this photograph. We need a background a cutter card, a soft box, a fill card, a camera of course, a meter, and a table. We're now going to talk about table to background distance. I start around four feet because I find when you take the subject farther away from the background you don't cast a shadow on the background. When you bring them close to the background it casts a shadow from the main light. Also, I find that when you take the table and you pull it farther away, the farther you get the light and the table away from the background, the background goes darker. Selecting the right background. Very important, because every photograph should have its own feeling and taste. With this photograph I'm doing of Jovanka here, I want something that's kind of subtle so she pops out and shows her sensuality. Something very simple and light, like the blue background we have here. I use big backgrounds really big backgrounds, 12 feet wide by 28 feet long. The reason why? I buy a background so I have an extra piece from the front. I cut off four feet off the front of the background and put that on the table in front of the subject, right here. So then the tabletop and the background match. Well, on this one photograph of Jovanka, I decided not to do that. I decided to keep the background the way it was and put a piece of black velvet on the foreground to have that kind of like a different type of shading. Not only do I use big backgrounds, but I use big light sources. A big four foot by four foot square bank or an octobank. But make sure that you don't get that light spraying all over that background. So I use a cutter card, four foot by eight foot, right in between the background and the light. Now when you bring the light in, bring it in slow and make sure that it doesn't get in your shot. But bring that light in as tight as you can without getting in the photograph. Then bring your camera in, and take your shot. The distance between the camera and the light box. Simple. Get that light box as close to the camera as you can without getting in the picture. But, depends on how you like your lighting. Do you want your lighting to be shadowy? Then put it away from the camera. If you want it to be open, bring the light in right towards your lens. Now make sure when you look through the camera that your light box isn't in the frame. Even though we're using pro photo lighting in my studio, I use Allen Chrome soft boxes, the four foot square box for one to two people, and the round one, six foot round, the octobank for uh, bigger groups. Or you can do something simple that you feel comfortable with. Get a sheet, two sheets of foam core, tape them together, make them a wedge, take two heads, put one on the lower bottom of the foam core, one on the top of the foam core. Put some shower curtain material in front of it. Roll that into the picture and you're ready to go. But make something that you feel comfortable with and that you're happy with. Fill boards. Well, I use a fill board that's two four foot by eight foot panels taped together. I bring it in as like a wedge and bring it into the subject. 
If I want the light to be open in the photograph, I bring it really close to the subject, right to the edge of that table. If I want it to be sh more shadowy, I bring the fill board back. That makes it darker. You have to choose which you feel comfortable with. Do you want things darker or lighter? Do you want a brighter photograph or a darker photograph? It's your choice. I'm mostly known for black and white photographs. And that's why I chose on this series of photographs that I'm doing today to show you black and white. And I use a certain film selection. I use Triax on location and Ilford HP5 in the studio. The film is rated 400 ASA. But I, being Mark Hauser, have decided, hey, what the hell? I'm gonna shoot it at 160. And then I bring it to the lab and process it normal. Meaning I get a really chunky negative, really thick. So then if I need more shadow when I make a print, I can get more shadow. If I want the highlights to be brighter, I can print lighter. You have it all there on the negative when you shoot it that way. There are all different ways of doing it. Take a gray card, hit a strobe meter, take a bouncer, take this way. My way of doing things is, I think, a very simple way. You take your assistant, Trish is my assistant, have her sit down exactly in the same place that the subject's gonna sit. She takes the strobe meter, puts it right in front of her face and points it to the camera. Presses the button and gets the exposure. Bang, that's it. People ask me, what's your favorite f-stop, Mark? Well, my favorite f-stop, F11 and F16. It gives you a lot of space and room for the subject to move around and get everything in focus. Also, when you get old like me, you need that room. Background exposure is very simple. Don't take the meter reading. Just take the picture, look at your Polaroid, and see what the background looks like. If the background is too dark, bring the table close to the background. If the background's too light, bring the table and pull it away. The farther you take that table away with the light, the darker the background. The closer, the lighter. Now try it. growing up, my father told me, Mark, cropping is for farmers. I started showing him my pictures. I said, look at this, Dad. Look at this great picture I did of this kid. And then I took it and I just cropped into his head. He says, Mark, he says, when you start cropping, you start taking away the quality. You start taking away the way you really saw it. So when you look through that camera, Mark, look at everything in your frame and make sure that every edge is what you're looking for. Don't put anything in there you don't want. That's hence cropping is for farmers. Don't crop. You know, the camera captures the moment, but really you capture the moment. The camera is just a device. It's a technical machine. You have to know when the moment is. Um, sometimes they go on location and I just sit there for like 15, 20 minutes and frame the picture the way I want it and wait so the moment happens. Wait till something happens and makes that event. Same thing when I'm doing a portrait session. I put, set the person up and I sit, sit them down. Sometimes they say, hey, let's take a break. So we all take a break and suddenly, for some reason, the subject just relaxes. I turn around, I see the shot, I turn, bring in the frame, shoot the picture. It's, a, it's good. Try something different. Try to get that moment. Try the different ways of getting that moment. Try different little, uh, just play with it. One thing I want you to do today is go through some magazines, go through photo books, go and look at everything you can get in front of you. Get as visual as possible. Pick out the things you like. Pick out the photographers you like. Pick out those pictures you like. And look at the ad, look at that picture and say, how would I have I done that picture? And then do another picture that's kind of like it. Trying the same emotion. Try different photographs with all different emotions. It's new, it's fresh. Try something different. Look, see, the world's big. Our eyes are so small. 
but how big they see. The personality face is that face that they practiced in the mirror before they came to your photo session. They get at home and they say, gosh, I'm going to do a picture today. So I better look really good. So they get in the mirror and they start posing towards the mirror. Which looks better, my right or left hand side? My top of my head, my bottom. Does this smile look good or does this smile look good? What I try to do is get them away from that personality face. Try to get them to do that moment that they really reveal themselves. And the way to do that is I have to really reveal myself. Do shockers, scream, shout. Don't be afraid. You're not gonna embarrass yourself. You're, they're gonna go, wow, this guy's crazy. This woman's crazy. Come on, do something different. Try something different. Who knows, it might take you on a whole new route to photography. It can't be bad. Well, you know, sometimes you can't get what you want on that tight shot. You got to get the whole body in. And that's why I will go for the full length shot, where I'll get the feet in there, the knees, the whole body. And I do it kind of differently than a lot of people. I do it with a backlight. And I use the little beauty light to light the background. That's a lot different than most people. It really has a nice little highlight on the corner that attracts your eye to the corner and kills the shadow from the main light for the background. Well, first of all, with the main light on a full length shot, I use a bigger light. I use the Octobank, which is about six foot round. I put it to the left of the frame, about five feet away from the subject. I also bring it up a little higher than their knees, so I can it, the light hits the floor and the top of their head at the same time. Also puts a little bit of highlight on the top of their head. Why I put my main light on the, on the left side? That's a simple answer. When I first started photography, it was all by myself. I didn't have a photo assistant. So I had the camera and the light. I would use the camera with the right hand, and I'd move the light with the left hand. It made it very easy. That's it. Today, we're going to use the gray background, a background that everybody has in their studio. Now, I usually use my little signature background, which is a floral print. It has, like, little floral on the right, little floral on the left. But we're going to be shooting this dancer, and she's wearing a beautiful dress, a beautiful tutu, and it has very ornate patterns. Well, I felt the ornate patterns of the, the tutu would take away from the background. So I wanted to get the tutu to stand out and her. So I made it a plain background instead of a busy background. Keep things simple. I find the simpler the better. Now I use a beauty dish, the biggest one they make, and I put it all the way to the right, not the left. Because if I put it all the way to the right, I not only put a nice highlight in the corner, but I get rid of the shadow that's casted from the front light, which is really great. You're doing two birds with one stone. Another thing is the reason why I use the boom is because if I use a light stand, to get the light to exactly where I want to go, you would, I would get the light stand in the shot, and I want to be able to move back and forth, and I have a free frame to move wherever I want without getting the light stand in the photograph. We're going to talk about lighting ratios now. Pretty simple stuff. I get my light meter reading from the front light. I get an F11. I go to the back, behind the subject, and reach up to the top, a little bit to the, more to the right, where that highlight starts from that backlight. The backlight should be about three feet from the background. I put the light meter up, hit it until I get F16. Just keep bringing that strobe back up to get F16. Front light F11, back light F16. A stop difference. Why do I use a fill board instead of another soft box? The reason why is very simple. When you have the other soft box in there, you get another spectral highlight. I don't like two spectral highlights in my photographs. I only like one. So I use the main light and a fill board. And the closer I bring the fill board, the more open it gets. The farther away, the darker it gets. As I said, if I used another softbox, I get another hot highlight on the other side of the face. I don't want that in my photographs. The cutter card is really important, even on a solid background shot. You're using a big light source, and you need that cutter card to slice it down a little bit. 
so the light doesn't hit all over the background, just part of the background. So use that cutter card and align it right with the subject, and it'll be right in the right place, about three feet from the light, two feet from the subject, and you're right on. We're talking lens selection now, and that's really important. On this video, all the pictures are taken with the 110 millimeter lens on the Mamaya. The reason why? I like the roundness of the lens, the sharpness, but mainly because most photographers use the 150 millimeter to 200 millimeter lens, which compacts things. I like things more round, so I use the shorter lenses so I can get in tight and get the roundness subject, get more detail. You're also close to the subject to be able to work with them. You know, quality strobe gear is a must. I use Profoto and the Pocket Wizard, which is a really good combination. Number one is because you can move your camera wherever you want in the room. You don't have to worry about tripping over cords. You don't have to worry about where the sink box is, where the cords is, is in your way. Also, when you use the strobe meter, you just bring the strobe meter right into the frame. You don't have to worry about taking it out of the camera and hook it up to the meter. So trying to get components to work together really well, this is the way to do it. I just showed you all my tricks for the full length shot. Now it's your turn to pull out your bag of tricks. So try something new, try something different. Try something you've never tried before. Use that head, use that brain. That's your biggest tool. Hey, Javanka, how you doing? How you doing? Real good, real good. Good to see you. Nice seeing you. What'd you bring? Well, I got this hat and I have these Wow, dresses. where'd you find that? It's a great hat. Look at that flower, a big yeah. black flower on the side. That's great. And I have these two dresses. Wow, vintage dress. Wow, this is beautiful. Yeah. I think it's a little too light for this shot, though. I'd rather go with something that goes with that hat because it's so fabulous. Yeah, that dress is great. So go with this dress and the hat, because I think the, ha the dress and the hat will silhouette your face better, okay. and you'll pop out better. Great. Well, go into makeup, uh -huh. and we'll see you in a bit. Sounds wonderful. Hair and makeup. You know, it's really important. I have hair and makeup artists on almost all my shoots. The main reason why? The cleanup. A little bit underneath the eyes, a little bit of on the cheeks. Also, getting the hair just right. Because when you're looking through the camera, all the little dangling hairs get in the way. Well, if you have a hair and makeup artist there, they clean them up. And they clean up the face. It really looks nice. It's a really important thing to have for a great photo shoot. Jovanka, come on in. Sit down. We're ready. Uh, lean in a little bit more. Okay, put both hands in front of you like this. I want to get your face as close to the light as possible. Move a little bit more towards me. Okay, I want you to lean in a little bit more. Now put your one arm on top of uh, your waist, just like that. Bring your arm closer to me. That's right there. Turn your head towards the light. Now bring your head down a little bit. Okay, now turn your eyes towards me. This is it. Just a little more, a little more right there, right there. That's it. That's, that looks really nice. Hold on. Trish, can you come in and give me a meter reading on this? F11. F11, that sounds great. We'll just go right to film. This looks great. That's great. Look toward me. Javanka, look down. Okay, look toward me. Head up. That's it right there. That's great. Little smile. Little, like a little Mona Lisa smile. That's great. Isn't that it? Give me a big smile. That's it. That's it. Giggle a little bit. <laughs> okay. Put, put, put both of the hands in front of you. Just did it. Head down a little bit. Just did it. Perfect. Just did it. Close your eyes. Just did it. Now look up toward me slowly. Look toward me now. 
right there. That's perfect, perfect. That's like that. Turn your turn your Just like that. A little down now. Head down a little bit. That's great, right? That's wonderful. Just like that. Close mouth smile. This is it. That's great. That's great. Look right there. That's it. That's great. Turn your head toward me a little bit. That's wonderful. Just like that. Okay. Now bring your arm back up like that. Okay. Turn your head that way. Perfect. I think we got it. That's it. Looks great. great. Thanks, dear. Wow. I'm really excited about the way these photographs went. The way the highlight came on Jovanka's face from the main light and the way the fillboard came out. Oh, I really think the shadow part was really nice. A little bit of detail in that black area. And then how the cutter card came in and just put a little shadow on the background. I just can't wait to see. Everything seemed to go perfect. Well, when I get to a job and I'm walking through the room or even when they come to my studio, I watch everything they do what they carry around with them. I sometimes ask them to empty up the, out their pockets to see what they carry around. Because what I'm really doing is everybody has their story. We all have our story. We all have all those little things we collect in our brain. And what I'm trying to do is put out there a little bit of it about that person's story when I, they, they look at the photograph. When they look at the picture, they can say, hey, that guy has a neat story. And they kind of like read into what they're all about. Sometimes the story isn't exactly right, but hopefully it gives a little feeling of what they're all about. And that's what the story is, a feeling. I find they get the best stuff on the first few minutes of a photo session because the energy is up to the peak. You're really getting excited. You're really putting everything out there and putting all your energy out to them and they're putting all their energy out. And you're trying to capture a moment. And that moment, if you spend a lot of time trying to find it, I find that the photo sessions that I've seen by other people, uh, so I was doing a photo session of Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan said, you know, Mark, last week I was as a photographer. It took four hours for him to do my portrait. We didn't get one good picture. I find you get the best stuff when you just go in there and go for it. Don't waste your time. Go for the feeling. Go for the emotion. Go for the shot. So making the moment right, to get everything aligned, you have to be positive. You have to put out positive vibes out there. You gotta put positive feelings. I'm not be saying, do yoga, go hmm. I'm saying, be yourself, be positive. Go out there and conquer the day. Come up to them and tell them how great they look. Make them feel good. Make them feel good, because when they're feeling good, they're looking good. I always tell people when they come to my photo sessions, to wear their favorite outfit. Because I find that they, when they're wearing their favorite clothes, they feel good in their favorite clothes. And they feel good about themselves. And that's what you want their photograph to be about. Them feeling good. The hardest part of photo session is getting the photo session. Getting the job. <laughs> the hardest part of the photo session is telling the person you got a great shot. I mean, they think that it's going to take forever. And it really is just a moment. A great photograph is not a film. It's a moment out of a person's life. It tells that exact moment a little bit about that person, sometimes a lot. So the hardest part is to convince your subject that the moment you're showing there is all about them and making them look good and feel good. This is the corner shot. It's a shot that came from when I used to live on Willow Street in Chicago. I had this little apartment with this little corner in the apartment with a window on the right hand side. I used to have people come to my studio and pose them in the corner. It was really nice because they could naturally feel comfortable in the corner and move around and do different things. Well, here's some pictures of my friend Wesley Kim with the artist, and you can see what I did. What's really good about the corner shot is that it takes up very little space in your studio. The most important part about the corner shot is the corner. And we're in the corner right now, and the corner is made of canvas with two by four backing. It's very simple. And when you walk out of the corner, 
You can just collapse it right to the wall. It doesn't take a lot of space up in your studio. It's great. What's stretched on this is not muslin, it's canvas. It's put down on here and nailed across. Then I had a background painter come in and paint it with a little texture. I tried to get it to match the walls of like this old apartment. And the walls were kind of like aging. So I wanted to kind of like a little mold on there, a little bit of dark to light. So if you look at it, you'll see little sections of light, little sections of dark. Components for the corner shot are pretty simple. We got the corner, we got the camera, we got the octobank. I use a big light for this and overhead on a boom. So it hits one wall to the other wall. And there you go. The distance between the camera and the corner. Well, I would say it's about 10 feet. And I'm using that 110 on the Mamaya, which makes it just kind of a really clean and simple shot. The distance between the subject and the light is about five feet. And the light should be crammed in between the corner. So it's just touching edge to edge. And the subject should be able to look up at it and look down at it and be lit from every direction. Should be a kind of like a flat but little contrasty light. So why don't you try it? Try it in your studio. Build yourself a corner. I think it'll be exciting. You'll get some different photographs with some different angles. You got so much to choose from. The corner is a great concept, a great building block. You can build anything in it. It's like a little miniature room that you can build your own world. So try it. Where does my creative energy come from? It comes from right here, my heart. I work with my heart. I follow the way my heart tells me to. And I'm not afraid of my ideas. I take my ideas and make them a reality. I, at my studio, have a group of people around me. And they're my family. And we all open up our hearts with each other and work together to get a final product that we're all proud of. And that's the final thing being proud of what you're doing. Well, sometimes I really think the clients want something really uh, safe. I'm always afraid that people don't want that Mark Hauser thing. But then I say, you know what? They must be having me here uh, for some reason. They want something done by Mark Hauser. Now, sometimes I get kind of scared and I go, okay, let's try this. So I give it the kind of like more of a commercial route. But then at the end of the shooting, I kind of like do something more, I do something for them, I do something for me. I know that sometimes when you're doing bankers and lawyers, they want something a little more straight and conservative. But at the end of the shooting, I say, hey, let's do something the way I would do it for myself. And I give them that a little extra. And people love when you give them that little extra. Words of advice to wedding photographers and portrait photographers are watching this video. The big word of advice is, Get out there and take pictures. Do samples. Come up with new ideas. Try the corner shot. Try my table shot. Try my full length shot. Try different things. And use what I, my, my things and my tools that I'm teaching on this video are just beginnings of a tool. They're beginnings of you walking into a room like a working environment. Then you could just take and create your own ideas in that environment. Do something more than I do. I want you to do great photographs. I'm doing this video to say, here, this is my little basic things that I do to, to create my world. Now it's time for you to create your world and your ideas and your style. Style, that's what you gotta create. Create your style. People come running. It all starts with the idea. I put it on a sheet of paper. I draw it out. I kind of like map out the room or map out my studio for that day. 
I get the sheet of paper, I put it next to my camera. Maybe I tape it on the back of my uh, film back. I look through the, the camera, get my subject in there. I look at the subject and I start trying to create in my head. But the first thing I do is come up to the subject and give them my feelings and my taste on what I'm going for. You gotta tell people your opinions. You gotta tell people your feelings. You gotta direct. You gotta show your emotions. You've got to give it to get it. That's what I do. I give everything I got to get what I want. When I want something with sad eyes, I give sad eyes. When I want happy eyes, I give happy eyes. When I want big people left, ah, I do something crazy. So what you got to do is you got to give it to them all. And then you look through that camera and you're just shooting. And when it starts happening, I just know it. I look at the camera and I look at the subject, they go, wow, yeah, okay. And I get people excited about the moment because I'm getting excited. My heart starts pumping, my hands start jumping. I, I get the model, everybody around me, there's an energy in the room that starts creating. And suddenly I see that picture, I go, yeah, that's it. Come on, give it to me. That's right, okay, ah, oh, that looks great. Come on, oh, stop, hold it, right there. And I know I've got it. And when you know you've got it, that's when you know you're a great photographer. When you know you can stop right there, and that's a picture. I want to thank you for uh, picking up my uh, DVD world. And I hope that you go to our next ones, because we're going to do one or two or three more. But I really want to thank you for picking it up, and I hope that this takes you on a whole new road of ideas. And don't be afraid of those ideas, because the next big idea you have could be the great one.